the face. I'm gonna start off with my primer. I have the Milk Hydro Grip. This stuff is really good, okay? She is my tried and tested baby girl. So usually what I do is I put this in my T-zone areas or the areas that I have the most oils. And then the last step that I like to do is just like press the primer in just as I would do with my moisturizer. So with my moisturizer, I apply and then I just press it into my skin. So I sort of treat my primer like I would a moisturizer. So that's a tip. So for foundation, I'm going to use the Lancome Tien Et Dol foundation. I am in the shade 555 Suede. So I'm just going to use my beauty blender to apply the foundation. Now, if you want much more of a fuller coverage, you definitely want to use a brush. Um, but it's summertime. I like more of like a skin-like finish. And a beauty blender does that finish for me. So I'm going to go in with a dump beauty blender to just blend. And I usually start from the lower parts of my face because I see that those areas definitely need much more coverage as compared to the center part of my face because obviously these areas are much more brighter and then these areas are much more darker. So you always want to start from the lower parts of your face and then take it up. I know a lot of people say to prevent creasing um, you don't want to you know use the foundation under your eye area like don't use it there I don't believe in that concept because I have done foundation with concealer under my eye area and just concealer under my eye area and it works the same um, it doesn't make a difference I've actually had just um, foundation and concealers with my routine that looked way flawless than just concealer so I think it's the way you blend it and the way you layer the product it doesn't necessarily um, you know if you put foundation in that area it won't necessarily crease but you have to set it well because foundation is much more liquid and your under eye creasing is a lot the, literally the creases that you have under your eye there are a lot so when you fill it in you need powder to set it and keep it in place so that's why majority of the times they advise to not use foundation under your eye but when you do use foundation under your eye you just want to blend well and make sure that everything is nice and seamless all right so this is foundation um this is what it's looking like i always always love this foundation i can never complain about it because she's always perfect so so next step is going to be my concealer now for concealers i'm so happy because i have uh i've been doing this routine for a while it's an updated routine all right so for concealers i use two concealers i'm going to be using the this is the lanco um this is the all over face concealer i have the shade 560 and 470 so basically what i do is i layer my concealers for that nice flawless lifted under eye look i start off with a concealer that is the closest to my skin shade and then i follow up with the one that's lightest so so i'm gonna start off with the shade 560 I just realized that I picked up the wrong concealer I'm so mad at myself I was supposed to go for 530 and then I picked up 560 now 560 is is a good concealer shade it's just not like you know you don't see anything it's like a daytime kind of look so I think I'll use that as a color corrector I'll just leave that on as a color corrector but I'm gonna go in with 530 this is much more warm so this would give me um, a nice you know highlighted look a little Blending my under eye concealer, I like to look all the way up so that I can fill in all the crevices, the nukes and the crannies. You want to make sure that your 
blending from your heart. I'm not even joking. When you're, if you're stressed out doing your makeup, it will show on your face. It will literally show in your finish. So you always want to consider the finish that you want to get and then put in the work to make sure that that finish is looking good, you know. So first layer of my concealer is done. I'm going to go in with my blush before I apply my next concealer. I'm using the Fenty Beauty, this is the Fenty Beauty blush, cream blush in the shade Daiquiri Dip. I love this shade because it's an orange toned blush and as a black girl this is the shade of blush that you always want to be wearing okay because that's the only shade that you know makes us look true to skin I don't I'm not saying that you can't wear pink blushes you definitely can I'm just saying this is what keeps us true to tone so also with your blush you want to target blush is definitely you know I'm blushing my cheeks you know what I'm saying but you want to drag it all the way up so that it blends in with all the products that you've used because imagine if you are just putting it on your cheek it's not going to make sense so you want to put it on the cheek but also drag it up you always want to drag your blush up so that it gives you that nice look so i'm going to go ahead and use the 470 shade this is going to be the layered concealer um, and this is the one that is going to give us that nice under eye the bright under eye look this is the one that gives you that so you want to keep that right here right in the inner corner of your eye sometimes i just place it there sometimes i try to exaggerate a little but you always want to keep it right in the inner corner of your eye so that it gives you what you're looking for you don't want to stretch it out So I try to press it in as much as possible, make sure that majority of that product stays in this area and then I'm just going to go ahead and drag it out so that it merges with the previous concealer that we had already put down. So this is what it looks like when you layer the concealer and then you blend it well. I'm going to go in with the blush brush again. That was difficult to say. Then I'm going to go in with the blush again and just sort of reapply just to also blend it in. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and set my under eye. I'm usually not a cream contour kind of girl. I'm a powder contour kind of girl. So if you're wondering, <laughs> but I'm going to use my Laura Mercier powder to set my under eye. Usually what I do is I dip, 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 and then I tap off the excess here, but not as much excess. I'm not going to lie. I like to use powder. Like I like to set my under eye really, really well. So I don't really tap off a lot of excess because this powder is not so troublesome. It doesn't go all over the place. It doesn't mess up your makeup. It's very easy to it's very easy to actually like clean it off if you make a mistake. So she's not she's not so bad, you know. But before I go ahead and blend or before I go ahead and set with the powder, I'm gonna go in with the beauty blender one more time and just press my under eye product. Make sure that everything is sitting right. I have no creases, nothing of that sort. And then very quickly, <laughs> very quickly, I'm just going to press this in. face is set so now I'm gonna go in with my contour this is from Fenty Beauty it's their soft matte powder foundation in the shade 495 and that's what I use as my contour shade struggled a bit with nose contour in the past so now that I have a hang of it let me tell you guys what I do so I just do my contour and then what's left of the powder on the brush I just use that to shape my nose what you want to do is you want to shape your nose in a way that it shapes into the brows but you just want to follow the shape from your brow bone so from the beginning of your brow when you follow the shape 
wherever it takes you is the bridge of your nose if it makes sense so when you start from here and you brush down as I'm doing so keeping it right here and I'm following the trace from the tip of my eyebrow to where it would slant down towards so that's what you're doing and then you're just going to brush it again into the brow so that it's not so pronounced and at the tip you want to always do a V so at the tip you slant the brush towards this angle on this side and then you're gonna do the same for the other side so you're going to slant the brush like this at the tip to create that V and then do this to meet what you're just doing on the other side and then that creates the little slanted nose or the V for you you know gives you a nice bridge on your nose and yeah I'm usually not the type of person to go for a harsh nose contour I used to never even like a nose contour because I'm like uh no I don't like my makeup to make me look all treated no I want to still look like me so um, I wasn't doing it I think saddle really looks good and also if you feel like the bridge is a little too big or the concealer or the powder that you used to you know highlights the nose is too much you just use the brush and brush the sides in very gently all these steps you want to be very light-handed so I'm just gonna brush the sides in and what it does is it closes that gap for you so the more you brush in the more it gives you a much slimmer line um, which sort of gives you the illusion of a smaller nose if you get it so that's it on nose contour I feel like I just went on a whole lesson on nose contour with you guys right now but that's key so keep it in keep it in your pocket okay all right guys so the face is base is like 90 percent done at this point i'm gonna go ahead and do my eyes and all of that good stuff come back so that we can finish up the face okay guys so the eye area is done now time for the next step which happens to be my very crucial step this next step i'm gonna go ahead and set my under eye again with another powder this is going to be a much lighter powder as compared to what we used I would say you want to take a powder that is pretty bright um, but also a powder that you trust a powder that you know that you can very easily dust off because that is key all right so I'm gonna go in with my hide setting powder this is the hide translucent setting powder in the shade translucent honey and that's why I'm using an undertone that has or a base you know a powder that has a honey undertone which means that it works it will work for someone who is dark skin so you don't just want to use a white powder until you trust it I'll say it again until you actually trust the powder my very immediate under eye which is literally right here I'm gonna press the powder in So this is sort of what you're going to be looking like if I'm being very honest with you. When you place the powder in that area, this is what you should be looking like for at least a minute or two. Okay, so next step for me is going to be my pressed powder. I'm using the Juvia's Place pressed powder. This is in the shade Zambia. But before I go in and do that, let me see. What you can do is you can just straight up brush this off just brush it off before you set your whole face we can do that or you can set your face finish off all of that and then use what's left of this powder on the brush to take this off so I'm just I'm just gonna brush it off so now I'm just gonna go ahead and set my face very also very light-handed because this product is a powder foundation so it's very pigmented if you do want a much more chiseled look you can also go in with what's left of the powder and then i'm just gonna try to like clean up and you see even though there's no product you can still see something going on that's what you want gonna use the brush to sort of dust off the excess and then also make sure that my whole face is blended in and not like having different areas looking different you know 
So you guys see the skin, everything is sitting just as we want it to sit. Um, but the last, pretty much the last thing for the base is going to be my highlighter. Um, I've been loving gel highlighters as of late. I don't know. Powder highlighters make me, they give me much more of like a grainier look which I don't really like. So I stopped using highlighters for the longest time till I came across this bad boy. This is the Dewy Highlights Glossy Cheek Glow from Ciate London. I will leave a link in the description box to their website if anybody wants to check it out. But this stuff is amazing. Like it's beyond me. <laughs> so I usually do a little bit at the back of my hand like so and then i'm gonna use my beauty blender to just dab 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 into that over here and one thing i like about this highlighter is even though it's glossy it doesn't exactly take away the products that you put there all the powder products that you have originally used this highlighter will just sit right on top of it it's not gonna take it away it's not gonna leave it looking patchy like it just gives you a nice healthy dewy kind of glow and i love it i just absolutely love it <laughs> so you guys see it is so beautiful it's not i feel like it's definitely not overwhelming if you feel like it's too much you can always press it in so that it's like much more skin like and then I'm just gonna use what's left of that to highlight the bridge of my nose, my lip. And then I also sort of like to go in my forehead areas. This is originally what I would do if I was using um, just a powder contour, I mean a powder highlight. So, so generally the face looks dewy, it looks glowy, it looks fresh. That's how we want it to be. I know a lot of people will set the makeup in between steps because I, I have a very oily skin like my face gets really oily I omit that step because my face is still going to look nice and dewy when I'm done and I know that for a fact so I guess you should know your skin um, and if you feel like you need to hydrate in between you should do that but I don't want to, I don't want to do that because then my skin is just going to look way too dewy way too glowy no I don't so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and set my face I'm using this setting spray from cap cosmetics um, this is really nice it's also very hydrating I like the mist that it gives you so okay guys so this is what the face is looking like right now I love it <laughs> the base is basing the skin is skinning the hydration is all over all right I absolutely love it I told you guys that once I set my face with the setting spray all of the glow is gonna come right back up like always <laughs> so this is exactly the reason why I don't set my makeup in between the steps because then it will just make me look way more oily or my oils will start building up way faster so I try to always set at the end of my makeup look but you can definitely set in between it depends on your skin type all right I just also wanted to say that if you know after you set your makeup with a setting spray if the glow that you're getting is too much or you feel like my face is looking a little too shiny you can take your beauty blender turn it to a side where you have pretty much no product literally no product and then what you're going to do and it also needs to be dumb okay and then you're going to use that to press in the makeup so you're just gently pressing the one side i usually don't like pressing too much is my highlighter because i need for that glow to still show but every other part of my skin i'm just going to press it in and this will reduce the amount of glow that you have from that setting spray especially if you're combination skin or oily skin that i think this step will definitely help but this is pretty much my base routine i'm using all of my favorite high-end product i'm very excited that i've finally been able to do a high-end base routine for you guys i hope that you guys like this i will list the products in the description box as well as leave a link to my amazon storefront if you guys wanted to shop anything but this is the look it looks cute i love how my lip turned out even though i didn't show you guys I, th I still think it looks cute 
comment below if you have any questions follow me on instagram um, and all my social media platforms akosia benkine across all social media platforms i love you guys so much and thank you guys so much for watching i will see you in my next video Mwah.